any true foresight, there is something repugnant about men so careless of their appearance as Philip Bossini. It argues a lack of deference towards the rules of polite society, towards foresight, in other words, that strikes them as immoral, if not positively dangerous. But Soames, though a foresight through and through, is clever enough himself to recognize brains in others. He might despise Bossini, but he intended to use his ability. After all, if the fellow could build houses, what did his clothes matter? And Bossini? Well, he didn't know any more than Soames did that this was probably the most fateful day in both their lives. Gravel soil. What's that? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's a fair sight, but. Uh... Ah, here comes Oliver, the agent. I've asked him to meet us here. I'm the solicitor for the estate. Getting in on the ground floor, eh? <laughs> well, I expect you've got business to discuss. I'll leave you alone for a, for a bit. Well, Mr. Forsyth. Morning. Natural architect? He may be, if I decide to build. I think you'll be making a mistake, sir, if you don't. Mm. I think your people ought to come down in price to me. Well, this site's the cheapest we've got at the top of the hill. They're dearer by quite a bit. It's possible I may not build at all. The ground rent's very high. With respect, sir, we've only got to advertise to have a mob of people after it. You'll find nothing like it near London. Well, I haven't made up my mind yet. I'll uh, see you later at your house. Glad to see you, sir. The wife will have some lunch ready. Forsyth. Well, I found a very place for your house. Look here. You may be clever, but this site will cost me half as much again. Well, hang that cost, man. Look at the view. For 8,000, I could build you a palace. I can't afford 8,000. I've taken that side of yours after all. Good for you. Soames is a brick, really a brick. To think that I should ever say that. Oh, Phil, it's wonderful for you. Wonderful. Now you'll show them all, won't you? Just. You weren't supposed to know. Nobody was. He didn't even tell you, did he? I've no doubt he will. In his own way. In his own time. Shall you be pleased if I build you a beautiful house? Well, of course you will. Who wouldn't? I'll be pleased if it helps you and Mr. Bossini. Oh, it will. Oh, this is just the beginning, isn't it, Phil? Oh, wait till I tell Grandfather. We'll be married in no time. Well, as you can imagine, Soames isn't paying me much. You see, it's all in the family. Oh, never mind about that. It's what comes after that counts. You'll be known. You'll be famous. <laughs> On the strength of one house. But surely it's going to be the most marvellous house ever built. Well, of course it is. Oh, I really you'll have no end of trouble. People will come for miles to see it. And Soames won't let any of them inside the gate. No. Philip, may I call you that? We're going to be cousins. I'm honoured. Well then, Philip, if you wish to please your client, 
you must build a high stone wall round the house with broken glass on top and strong iron gates and notices everywhere. Beware of the dog. Keep off the glass. Abandon hope. What nonsense! Soames loves to show off. You know he does, Irene. Why, look how he insists on you going to the best dressmakers and the jewels he keeps buying you. Why, he... Yes, you're right and I'm wrong. Soames is very proud of his possessions. So, you will be famous and we shall all sit at your feet. Yes. <clears throat> We're going to your grandfather's for lunch. I better brush up a bit. Show me along. Don't mind him, will you? He tends to be a bit sudden. I don't mind a bit. Oh, it's incredible, isn't it? It's all going to happen here and in his mind. Don't you think he's a wonderful man? Thank you, Smither. You are a good girl. Oh, thank you, miss. One moment, Smither. And dear, it's I, Hester. Very well, Smither. Ask Miss Hester to come in. Ah, how pretty. Thank you, dear. Oh, dear Anne. How are you this morning? Bobbish, thank you. Timothy? A little upset. Oh. He's been reading the Times. Oh, I do wish he would not. It does put him out so. All about the dear Queen's naval review at Spithead. Oh, yes. The Jubilee, of course. I should like to have seen it. Timothy says it's a great waste of money, all that coal being burnt up in battleships. But that is what coal is for, dear. Oh, yes. Yes, I suppose it is. <laughs> and then he's worrying about the dear Queen. He thinks she may have caught a chill. At her age? Mm. She's not even 70. But, Anne... I must tell you the great news. Soames is going to build a house at Robin Hill. Oh, right out in the country. And who do you think he's engaged as an architect? Not? Yes, Mr. Bossini. We're not supposed to mention it, but June said that I might tell you because she thought it would cheer you up. Cheer me up? <laughs> what an extraordinary expression. Still, it was good of her. And it's very nice for dear June. Oh, yes, indeed. But I do hope they will be careful. Building. It's rather dangerous. Yes. A risky business. When you see Soames, tell him from me. Tell him to be very careful. We're not supposed to talk about it, but I thought that you, as Soames' sister, would naturally be the first to hear. Well, I can't say I didn't have an inkling. What did Timothy say? Did he have a fit? There. I knew how it'd be. But nobody tells me anything. Don't see what Soames wants with a young man like that. Shouldn't be surprised if Irene had put her all in. She and that young June together, hmm? Happens all the time. And, I might add, as far as June is concerned, it seems to me that she is keener on him than he is on her. She's always following him about. You've no business to say such a thing. Why not? It's true, isn't it? It is not. And if it were, it's disgraceful to say so. Hmm. Well, I can tell you one thing. Now that she has the buccaneer in tow, she won't give tuppence for you, as you'll discover. Not that it matters. We're going to live in the country. You did hear what I said? Yes. But you don't seem interested. I knew already. June, I suppose. Oh, this family. You're one of them? I suppose you don't want to go. 
Well, you never seem contented here. I can't tell what you want. If it's so important to you, why don't you ask? It's a, it's an odd sort of house. Look, there's a lot of room cut to waste. The principle of this house is that you should have room to breathe. Like a gentleman. Well, if you don't like it, you better say so. I haven't said I didn't like it. All right, then, look. Now, you can swing a cat here. Now, the house is a rectangle. This is a covered court. And this is for your pictures. Divided from the court by curtains. And you draw them aside, and you have a space 51 by 23, 6. Now, this end wall is all window. You've got a north light from there, and a southeast light from the court. Mm -hmm. Simplicity and regularity. Those are the principles. Well, in architecture as in life. We overload our houses with decorations, gym crags, anything to distract the eye. But this is wrong. The eye should rest. You should get your effects with a few strong lines. Regularity. No self-respect without it. Look, won't it look rather like a... like a barrack? Yes, I see what it is. I can't say I'm surprised. You want one of my uncle's houses, hmm? just like anybody else's. But the servants live in garrets and the front door sunk so that you have to come up again into the hall. Hmm. Splendid, by all means. Look, you get my uncle. I'll tear this up. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, it's certainly uh, original. It covers a lot of ground. Space, air, light. You can't it like a gentleman in one of my uncles. Well, he builds for manufacturers. Yes, I dare say. Now, it won't be cold, will it? Now, Irene can't stand the cold. She won't be cold. I've seen to that. Look, I've given you hot water pipes and aluminium casings. Mm -hmm. You can see them here, 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 all the way around. Now, you can get these in very good designs. What did I... Look at that. Ah, here we are. This is all very well, all this, but uh, now, what's it going to cost? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So now the... Uh, the house should be entirely of stone, but uh, no, I didn't give stamp for that, so I've settled for a facing. You should have a copper roof, but, well, as it is, with the ironwork, well, let's say eight and a half thousand. Eight thousand five hundred, but plus the cost of the land, that's over ten thousand. I gave you a limit of eight. Well, can't be done for a penny less. Oh, now, surely there are well, lots of little things you Sorry, can... Sorry, not one. You can take it or leave it. Soames agreed. No. He really liked the design, though he's too jolly mean to admit it. <laughs> he's accepted the cost of the house and feels to have a completely free hand with the decoration. Now then, Gran, what do you think of that? I think it's remarkable, to say the least. This young man of yours, he's, uh, what's the word they use nowadays? Magnetic? Dynamic. <laughs> Electric. I dare say. As for me, my darling, I prefer oil lamps. They shed a gentler light. Oh, I'm all for the new things. I'd like to see the sparks fly. I'm sure you will before you're finished. And now I suppose you want to get married. Yes, please. You must wait. Oh, wait at least until this precious house is finished. Oh, Don't what? rush. Give the youngster a chance to prove himself. And try not to distract him too much. Leave him free to work. As he is working for you, that's not only the kindest thing you can do, it's the wisest, for your own sake. Talking of wisdom. You're a sage. Yeah. Socrates isn't in it? <laughs> All right, Gran. I'll behave and I'll be patient. That chap, Soames, is going to... <laughs> Never cared for him. Who could? Oh, he'll be a man of property. Man of property. Ah, oh, well, had to be in the blood. Lunch is served, uh, sir. Oh. 
Thank you. Thanks. Uh, did I tell you I, I seen your father? Yes, you did. Would you, would you like to meet him? No, thank you. He's an amiable chap. I dare say. But I don't need him. Very well. Very well. I'll tell you this, my girl. You never know who you're going to need in this world. Cabby. Take me to Stanhope Gate. No, hang it. Wisteria Avenue, number 46. for you, ma'am. For me? Joe, are you expecting something? No, not that I know of. Did he tell you his name, Mrs. Hawkins? He says his name's Mr. Jolyon Forsythe, sir. What? No, no, no. You mean he's asking for Mr. Forsythe? No, sir. That's what he calls himself. He told me so. A very aged gentleman, sir, if I may be so bold as to describe him. Oh, Joe. I can't turn him away. No. No, of course not. Well, can I? Will you ask Mr. Forsythe, please, to join us? Very good, ma'am. Oh, children, come along with me. He's an old man, darling. Oh, it's... And it's all a long time ago. Who's that? I don't know. Crumbs. Doesn't he look old? I think he's an old grenadier. Forgive me for calling like this, without warning. I was watching the cricket at Lord's, just round the corner. Oh, yes. Was the match a good one? Only moderate. Come and sit down, Father. We're glad to see you. Come on. Thank you. Over here. Hey, you two ragamuffins, over here. Father, allow me to introduce you to your grandchildren. This one's Jolly, and this one over here is Holly. How Children, do do? this is your grandfather. How do you do? Hey, hey. <laughs> now this rag bag of a dog is Balthazar. Balthazar, <laughs> how do you do? <laughs> how do you do? How do you do? Forgive me, please. I must see about the children's tea. No, no. Excuse me. That was a shock. He should have known it would be. How dare he? How dare he come here like this? Has he no feeling? Doesn't he know what he's doing? To walk in like that after all these years as if nothing had happened. Well, perhaps he's lonely. He deserves to be. Oh, Elaine. When I think of those years, of how deliberately, how coldly he cut you out Not from his coldly. life. coldly. It hurt him deeply. More deeply, I think, than it hurt me. I had you to turn to. He had no one. He had his family. His precious family. His position in society. He had his money. And his damnable pride. If that was enough for him, then why isn't it now? Let him go to those things for comfort if he's lonely. Don't they exist any longer? Perhaps they don't mean so much. He chose them. He chose them just as he chose June instead of you. June. He's losing her, too. 
So he comes here. Why? Do you think it's for you? Or me? Or is it for our children? Oh. Does he want to take them as he took them? Darling, there's no danger of that. It's not there. No, and you know there isn't. Listen. Look, my love, what you can see there. That's true. He loves children. He's always loved small, helpless things. Although he'd die rather than admit to it. Why should he not admit to it? Why? Because he's a foresight. But it's true, nevertheless. I think that's what weighed most with him nine years ago. Now, well, my darling, he's nearly 80. What's he got to look forward to? Only death. Do you really want me to be harsh with him? Will he come here again? I think so. If we let him. Oh, Joe. Dearest Joe. How I make you suffer. Oh, don't let me, Joe. You mustn't let me. Come on, it's all right. Daddy, it's a chiming watch. Run along, children. Your tea's waiting. Come on. Nice little house you have here. Got the least bit? Mm -hmm. Don't like the neighborhood. Ramshackle lot. Yes, we're a ramshackle lot. Your wife's upset. I'm not surprised. I shouldn't have come, Joe. But I... Will she forgive me? I expect so. Just give it time. Ah, time. You don't know you're wasting it till it's gone. <laughs> come and see us again, Father. Won't you? Going well. Yes. I think we'll have to use ruby tiles. With a touch of grey in the stuff to give it a transparent effect. Mm -hmm. If we distemper the drawing room walls, ivory cream over paper, we'll get an illusory look. See, in the decorations, I want to aim at what I call charm. I like Irene's opinion. You mean my wife has charm? In the middle of the courtyard now. Yes. A clump of irises. I suppose you find Irene artistic. Yes. You want to look around? is here, madam, to see Mr. Forsythe. Is Mr. Forsythe in yet? Yes, madam, he's upstairs. Then please tell him, Bilson. Very good, madam. And ask Mr. Bassini to come in here. Shall I stop or don't you mind? No. you to continue. Because music and conversation don't go well together. One spoils the other. Well then, play. To listen to Schubert and to look at you. What more could a man ask? Philip, please don't flirt with me. I don't flirt. 
If I look at you, it's because I can't bear to look at anything else. You're very direct. Well, what else should I be? I'm an architect, not a politician. If I see something to admire, I admire it openly. If it's beautiful as you are, I'd shout it aloud. Philip. In God's name, why did you marry him? You've no right to ask questions like that. No. Why did you, Irene? How could you bring yourself to do it? That's a long story and rather a sad one. May we leave it at that? Ah, Vicini, you're here. At your command. I've been going through some of these accounts. They come to a lot more than they should. Now, if you make a firm stand against these builder chaps, you'll get them down, all right? I mean, they, they stick on anything they can. I take off 10% all round. It'll still be I'll over, take but I think every, I... every farthing I can. And then all I can say is that you made a pretty mess of things. But I've told you a dozen times they'd be extras. Well, I know that, and I wouldn't object to a ten-pound note here and there, but this is... Most of it's due to your own suggestions. What? You want double value for your money, and when you get it, you know what to pay for it. Oh. Well, I guess I can fetch the balance of the estimates myself, but I'm damned if I'll do another stroke of work for you. Now, there's no need to take that line. But that, all, all I meant was that when I'm told a thing is going to cost so much, I... I like to know where I stand. All right. But look here. You got my services dirt cheap and you know it. My fool of an uncle will charge four times as much for the work I'm putting in. What you want, in fact, is a first-rate man for a fourth-rate fee, and that's exactly what you've got. Well, let's go through it and see how the money's got. Soames! If you want to talk business, will you please go somewhere else? This is my drawing room, not your office. I'm sorry. And had you forgotten? June is coming to dinner. She and Philip are going to the theatre. Shouldn't you go and change? Uh, yes. But don't you change? No, I haven't time. Anyway, we don't go to the store. Look, Bassini, I'm sorry I got heated just now, but... Well, I can't stand waste. Now, go and make it up with Irene. Talk to her about the house. Well, I, I want her to think well of it. Good evening, Miss June. Hello, Wilson. What a gorgeous day it's been. Yes, Miss. Lovely. Has Mr. Bassini arrived? Yes, Miss. He's in the drawing room. Oh, don't bother, Wilson. I know the way, thank you. So many things to talk about between us. Now we shan't have time. Why not at dinner? Hmm. Dinner conversation. Hmm. Interrupt me with Schubert if you like, but not with past the salt. <laughs> Come to Robin Hill. Come on Sunday, by yourself. We can go out of the house together. I've promised to go driving with Uncle Swithin. The big one? Hmm. Excellent. Make him bring it with him. It'll do his horses a part of good. Irene, you must. Why? Because I want to see you there, in that setting. But don't you want to help me? Yes, Philip. Oh, yes, I do. How stuffy it is in here. That blossom. Azalea, isn't it? I can't stand the scent. Were you talking about the house? I haven't seen it yet. Shall we all go on Sunday? You may. I'm going driving with Uncle Swithin. Oh, surely. What does that matter? Throw him over. I'm not in the habit of throwing people over. Really? You surprise me. June? Well, if you're all ready, I'm sure dinner is too. Uh, shall we sit down?
It's cooler up here, then. What do you think of it? What? The play, of course. Oh. Well, what do you think of it? It's quite amusing. Yes, I suppose so. Better than that damn Shakespeare, anyway. Oh, Auntie, look. Hmm? Isn't that you? By Jove, so it is. With a wild buccaneer in attendance. Do you realise how I've been looking forward to this evening? I've planned it for weeks so we could be alone together. I didn't tell Grant, he'd be furious. And now... Now? She won't even talk to me. You've hardly said a word since we left. You and I have been working desperately hard and I'm tired. Not too tired to... I know, darling. It's just that I... I don't see you these days. And I thought for once... Well, what did you think? That we'd laugh and enjoy being together as we used to. Phil, take me to see the house on Sunday. No, not Sunday. Some other time. Why not Sunday? Why not Sunday? Because I have another engagement. You're going to An take... An engagement that prevents my taking you. Freddie, they've had the father and mother of a row. That's what's happened. Oh, poor Jim. Yeah, poor Jim. Before. She's too peppery by half, that one. The buccaneer had better watch out there, or he'll lose his little heiress if he isn't careful. Monty, dear, sometimes you make me sick. Philip Preston is a very strange young man, but one thing's quite certain. He's not interested in money. Oh, no, no. Jones or anyone else. That's all, may I? No, you're wrong. No. If he'd been just a fortune hunter, don't you think Uncle Jolien would have seen through him in a minute? <clears throat> now, finish your drink, dear boy. Unless you intend taking it into the stall. June? June? Is that you? Ah. Ah. How's the man of property? Have a good dinner? Yes, thank you. And Irene? Anyone else there? Only Phil. Well, did he bring you home? Why didn't he come in? What's wrong with the chap? Well, nothing. Nothing's wrong with him. Good night, Gran. But, Jim, uh, don't you want your milk? It's been kept out for you. Nothing, thank you. Night, my darling. Good. Yes, very good. <laughs> You've got the river there. Yes. A very poopy little view. It is delightful. Uh, get that straight. Yeah. As for the house... Uh, yes, Uncle? Well, it's not the sort of house I'm used to. Uh, take the hall now. Uh, you want some statues there. And that space in the middle, what do you call it, uh, under the skylight? The court? Yes. Now, don't go wasting that on plants. You take my advice. Have a billiard table. I'll say one thing, though. He's given you a very decent little cellar. <laughs> You've got room there for six or seven hundred dozen. <laughs> ah, as you're saying, you've given them a very decent little cellar. Oh, thank you. Uh, would you like a glass of champagne? Oh, you're quite the Monte Cristo. <laughs> Do sit down, Uncle. You must be tired. Oh, not a bit uh, enjoying myself. Uh, Irene? No, thank you. Oh, thank you. Mm. Mm. 
a nice wine. <laughs> Not the equal of my hide scene. <laughs> I was just thinking, sir, the, uh, the best view of the house is from down there by the cops. Uh, wouldn't you care to take uh, a... This view is good enough for me. <laughs> Would you mind if we... Not at all, not at all. I'll just sit here. <laughs> Let me fill your glass. Oh, thank you, my boy. A little more sherry. No, thank you, Selves. Well, I, I don't know how to advise you. Monty's a spendthrift and a wastrel. He, he's been nothing but a drain on Father since the day you married him. Uh, you would have him? Well, I'm not complaining. Oh, in many ways. I suppose he's not been the best husband in the world. But he's mine. And I'm fond of him. Yes, I know. How much is it this time? Three hundred. Three? He goes racing a lot, you know, with George. That chap? Yes, and it's very tiresome. George doesn't lose all the time the way Monty does. Well, that's because at bottom, despite his extravagance, he's a foresight. Now, you're Monty. Would... Well, I don't know what he is. Well, I dare say I can scrape it up somehow. This time. The main thing is not to worry Papa. Yes, and Monty relies on that. Damn the fellow. Winifred, look. You can count on me if it comes to it, but what with one thing and another? Well, the house. No, it's sweet of you, dear. I shouldn't dream of it. I only wanted to tell somebody. Is the house very expensive? <laughs> More than I bargained for. It's not that so much, it's not knowing where I stand. That chap was silly. Hello, Winifred. How oh. oh. oh, nice to see you. 
I'll run upstairs and take my hat off. Don't go. Well, we all know she's pretty, and I suppose we've got used to it, but really, today... It's positively unfair on the rest of us women, and I shall tell her so. See if I don't. No, Swithin. You must be mistaken. She couldn't possibly have said that. Never. But I tell you she did. When I pulled the beast up, there she was, cool as... cool as myself. Bless my soul, she behaved as if she didn't care whether she broke her neck or not. Sit still, I told her. I'll get you home. And then she came out with it. I don't care if I never get home. Oh, what a dreadful thing to say. Irreligious, I call it. What do you think she meant? I wonder what Mr. Scholes would think. Who the deuce cares? She's a fine woman. Got some style about her. Not one of your damnedy scarecrows. Well, she seems to have made a conquest of you anyway. What's that? Well, I hope I know a pretty woman when I see one. <laughs> Knows how to dress, too. That frock she had on, fitted her like a skin, tied as a drum. Oh, really, Swithin? What was it made of? Made of? How should I know? I don't like the look of him at all. I wish somebody would come. Where's Smither? With Anne, of course. Miss Anne? Excuse me, Miss Anne? Miss Anne? Wake up. Miss Anne? <gasps> what should it have been made of, anyhow? I'll tell you one thing. That young architect chap, uh, what's his name? Mr. Bussini. Uh, yes. I shouldn't wonder if he was sweet on Mrs. Soames. Oh, no. Yes. I wasn't sure until I saw him pick up her handkerchief out there on the terrace place just before we left. Did he give it up back? Not a bit of it. I saw him kiss it when he thought I wasn't looking. Dear June, And then yes. the fellow put it inside his coat. Here. Miss... Miss Hester, it's Miss Anne. I think she's dead. Uh -huh. oh. Oh. So, there it is, Joe. As things are now, I, I thought you should know. Yes, it was good of you, Father, to come and tell me. Oh, there you are, my no, dear. No, please don't get up. I forgive this late call. Oh, yes, of course. Has something happened? Yes, my sister Anne died this morning. She was the oldest of us all, you know. I'm sorry. Oh, no need to be sorry. So we shall miss her. She was a link with the last century, mm. born 1799. Oh, so old. Can you imagine her as a child of six down in Dorset, watching the victory bonfires blaze out of Trafalgar? And a grown girl aged 16 at the time of Waterloo. Oh, I remember that myself. Thank you. I was a nipper aged uh, nine. There was a parade and I shouted myself hoarse. Now, whether I knew what I was shouting about. I... <laughs> anyway, my father gave me half a sovereign and Anne gave me a shilling. George the Third coins. Got him to this day. Anne had memories. Yet she never married. No. There was someone, as I recall, but my mother died and so... And took her place. Cigar, Father. Uh, no, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, then. Poor Elle. <laughs> you could say that, but she was a strength to my father. He knew it, too, and came to rely on her. So did the lot of us. She was what you might call the nucleus of us all. She loved the family, and of all the children, Joe, she loved you best. She gave that me a is... pair of silver buckles that belonged to my grandfather, Superior Dosset Forsyth, uh, that old rogue. Oh, yes, I've seen them. Maybe an old rogue, Joe, but he was an honest rogue, don't oh, you forget oh, it. Now, as I said, it's... Anne was fond of you. That is why I want you to come to her funeral.
No. No. She's dead, so she won't miss me. I should like to have seen her again, though. She had humor and a great talent for getting the best out of people. Joe. Hmm? I should like you to be there. But my darling, well, I... Well, it is fitting. She loved you and gave you shoe buckles. And it is fitting that you should go. I agree. Well, I'm sorry, Father, I don't agree. When the Forsyte ladies accept my wife as my wife, and the Forsytes as a whole accept my children as, well, as your grandchildren, Father, then, if I'm invited, I'll attend their festivals and their funerals. But not till then. said she wouldn't last the summer. You said no such thing. I shall have to look about for some ground somewhere. What arrangements have you made? Don't talk to me about such things. Huh? They tell me Anne left her money to Timothy. What there is of it? Where is he? He ought to be here. He's kept to his bed since she died. He doesn't take any risks. I hear you organize the funeral. Certainly, I'm sole executor. Congratulations. You're a first-rate undertaker, too. You do find it pays. George, look. What are the prodigal son? <laughs> 